Hi everybody, my name is Edgardo Cambon. Welcome to Dance Papi again. One more chapter in this amazing percussion, which is the Latin percussion that we enjoy so much when we go to see a salsa band, for instance. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on the Cuban guiro. guiro. This instrument is made out of a calabash or a gourd. Uh, of course, this is a vegetable that grows in the floor. They take the root out, they let it dry, they take all the seeds out, and then they very carefully make these stripes. Uh, and the masters of these instruments are very, uh, you know, very picky about how deep the grooves are and how wide they are, etc. Instruments like this are found in many places in Latin America. Venezuela has the charrasca, Puerto Rico has the guicharo, especially used for uh, plena, but it's that's a smaller instrument with a smaller uh, gourds, a smaller uh, stripes, and uh, and it's also played with a peine or a uh, brush. While this one, the Cuban guido, which is the one that we're going to be focusing today, it's uh, played initially with a bamboo cane, but then later these plastic rods. It also can you can use it as a regular stick. But these plastic rods, uh, for me, they work pretty well because they slide well in the instrument. And I, I like that. Um, I also should mention that the Dominican Republic had an instrument called the guira. And that's a metal instrument, especially used in the merengue as well as in the bachata nowadays. Very important instrument, uh, similar to this, but made out of metal. So the differentiation between guiro and guira Dominican guira is an important one for you to guys know. This is the Cuban guiro. Uh, some notes to say about this instrument is that this instrument allegedly was present in the island of Cuba before the occupation of the Spaniards and thus the arrival of the Africans in the island. So it's an important instrument as well as the maracas because there are traces of the Tajino people and the people that were the native people of Puerto Rico and Cuba already having an instrument like this with a gourd. Uh, so uh, in Cuba anything that is made out of a calabas is called un guirito, un guiro. And there is of course the shekere which is a larger gourd type of instrument. We're going to make a special uh, presentation for that instrument in itself but it's the same vegetable. So and it's also used in Africa for many daily duties. Cooking, putting a salad uh, and putting grain etc or just uh, as a purse some, in some occasions. So this is a very important vegetable uh, that had helped uh, humanity. And in terms of the music, the two main styles that you're gonna hear this are the cha-cha-cha or cha-cha. Then you're also gonna hear a lot on the pachanga style or the charanga bands that use the guido as one of the main elements for driving force uh, in the percussion. And uh, of course, initially in Cuba, this instrument was used in a rhythm called danzón. So without any further ado, I'm going to just teach you right away the danzón, a very basic danzón. The danzón is based in a rhythm called the cinquillo, or in Spanish. Uh, my shout to all Latin America. Uh, so if I say some words in Spanish, I try to translate them. I wish I could do these videos bilingual, but another time. So without any further ado, I'm going to play for you the cinquillo rhythm on the gourd, eh? on the guiro, and it goes like this, one, two, three, four. Notice that it's a count of four, four, but I'm doing five strokes. It's going one and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Here are my strokes. Ta, 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 ta. Five strokes per one bar. Later on in the history of the danzón, they added a bar of quarter notes to sort of relax the rhythm because the rhythm was very syncopated at first with the cinquillo. Then they added four strokes completing what we now know as the danzón rhythm. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Two bars or counts. 
One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Notice that I'm putting ghost notes with my index on the back. I'm playing the in-betweens. Those notes are personal and anybody can do the ones they want as long as you don't you know, put a ring in there and become very, very loud in the gourd. But so, or you cannot put them at all. This will be without it. Embellishments. This was directly related with the baqueteo of the danzón on the timbal. There is a second section on the danzón called the paseo. And in the paseo, the widow player will play just the cinquillo. So I'm going to play four times the cycle of the danzón with the quarter notes, and then we're going to go into the paseo. One, and I'm going to sing something just for fun. One, two, pa da 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 da. Paseo y pam 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 So in this traditional music, back in the day, there wasn't a lot of rasgueado on the gourd. So now I'm going to explain to you how I hold the instrument. Maybe I should have done that before, but it don't matter. All, all paths always get to Rome, one way or another one. Most gourds have two holes. Some of them have a longer groove in here. So I hold it with my middle finger and my thumb and my index allows me to control what I'm going to do later on when I play fast salsa, which is rotate this gourd. So this allows me to control that, right? That's my preference position. But you may find a different gourd, so it's very important, especially if you get a natural one like that, that you select one that feels comfortable in your hand, right? So then the position of the stick, I'm going to hold the stick just like a, I would hold a, a regular drum stick, my index and my thumb, and then I'm gonna extend my index a little bit to give me a little bit, almost like if I'm holding a fork or a knife with my hand. So this gives me a nice relaxed position to move up and down in the gourd. Um, now I'm gonna tell you the strokes that we have in this instrument. We have the long stroke. I refer to that and because I heard it one time and I like it as the sapo or frog. It's, that's the long note that we do on the gourd and that note is going to be created by you starting in about one inch in the stick, not at the tip of the stick, but one inch in. You're going to go around in a circle motion very slow and you're going to try this stroke. Notice there is a circular motion in it. Of course, you can do this note just going down. And also you can also do it rasgueado, just going up. This one, the one that is used mainly in the cha-cha bit, is going to be a round motion. And I explain that to you when I teach you the full cha-cha-cha pattern in this instrument. Um, and there is a reason for the coordination of that motion that asks you to do a circle in it. I don't want to go too deep into the stick because it changed my pitch. Listen. Now I'm very low. You hear that? So this is my circle. I'm going to play it more the way that I play when I play in action. You're going to hear it in motion now.
In this motion, my attack is on the downbeat and my upstroke is a little slower. I personally rotate my hand a little bit slightly as I'm coming up. Very good. Note, that stroke is going to happen on beat one and beat three of the basic cha-cha pattern of this instrument. So, what comes in between? Beats two and and four and are going to be the next stroke that I'm going to teach you in this instrument, which are quick strokes, light. On this one, the stick approaches the, the gourd and scraps a little bit, but not a long note, but a quick one. So practice would be to go one and two and three and four. Three. Light. On this one, I'm a little closer to the tip of the stick. So that's going to happen. Right now, I'm doing eighth notes. One and two and three and four. Three. One and two and three and four. Three. One and two and three and four. Three. Let's just go right into the cha cha beat which is going to be a slow tempo and it's your basic rhythm really for the guido because hopefully you get a lot of chances to play that song. I wish because I love that music, but unfortunately, you know, you're, you're probably not get, you're going to get a lot more chances to play cha-cha-cha and faster salsa in this instrument than that song. The basic cha-cha pattern goes like this. One and two and one, two, three, four. guide on this. Look, I just happen to have a little cha-cha bell here. So when you hear the cha-cha bell, which is that small bell that the timbalero is going to have, it's going to have right on top of his timbal section where it has the bells. There's an important bell called the cha-cha bell. The cha-cha bell goes in one and three. So your long notes in the guido need to be in conjunction with that sound because it's hitting the same beat, right? Common mistakes I'm going to break this very slow, eh? so, and then I tell you the common mistakes. Slow, one and two and three and four and. a lot of people do with this instrument first of all is that they grab it and they just take it like this because they think isn't it easier to play when I have the grooves facing me and they start doing this type of thing. well it's a normal mistake it's kind of like a natural thing to think that you want to have the instrument facing you but in this case the gravity is gonna help you by you having the instrument this way furthermore you're gonna be using the wrist to do this you saw me already in some slow motions already moving along with it but in the faster tempo, you're definitely going to use that. So big no-no, big no-no, the instrument upside down. You don't want to have that. Uh, so the gourd is going to be like that. The mouth of the gourd is out this way. And if I'm in a standing position, follow me. If I'm in a standing position, my, in my instrument is going to be sort of facing the floor a little bit. Okay, in terms of the execution of the instrument, a mistake is to think that the long note goes into one direction only. So sometimes players do this. Long, quick, quick, long, quick, quick, long. So you say, but why not that way? Because you end up doing the rasgueado. One time you're doing it going down. The next time you're doing it going up. The next time you're doing it going down. And that motion should be a, cycle, a circle. So this is the long note. I end up up. Because if I go this way, one, then I'm doing up, up, 
and then I'm going, now I'm going up. My coordination is variating all the time and it's not going to allow me to get into a groove that is going to really carry the band. Uh, so the long note on one and three or sapo is going down and coming up. It's a circle. So that's mistake number one or number two. Mistake number three is when the accents are wrong. The guido needs to drive on beats one and three, which is the initial stroke of your long note. So when you hear this, my drive is with the bell. Sometimes people put the accents on the upbeats and I kindly say to them, you know what, I love reggae, I really love reggae, but don't put the accents like it would be in a reggae band where you're going, oh, you're putting the accents on the two end and on the four end, meaning these are the correct accents and then I'm going to play the incorrect accents. Correct. One, three, one, three, one, three. Incorrect for this style. So I'm putting more accents on so what you want is that the accents are on the drive of the downbeat, which is also the downbeat on the conga. So we're all pushing in the same direction, right? One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Okay, how can I speed up this rhythm? Because now I'm going to play for you, let's just say, I'm in a, in a, in a playing in a charanga, so I'm going to go and one, and two, and one, two, three, four. like to sing something or, or bring you into the groove of what would be the feel of this instrument in a band setting. Uh, so I was playing it faster, right? So in order to play faster, obviously I need to start with a metronome, start slow, go into a medium tempo, add 10 beats per minute every other practice or something like that, or go very, very slow. If you want to protect this instrument, you're afraid it's going to fall, get close in your bed to the mattress and practice on top. For some of some of these girls come with a little uh, strain, some of them to tie it up to your thumb, but it shouldn't it shouldn't fall. Um, you know you have a pretty good grip in there. So let's let's look at that rotation that I'm doing with this hand. That rotation helps for for the instrument to stay in touch with the gourd. So I want to start by asking you to do this. No, it's not now that the stick is staying still and the goal is going up and down. They both move in opposite directions. So you go light. So now when I'm doing my long note, my, my gourd is also going opposite grain of the stick. And so a, a, a good way to practice that, at least on the fast strokes, is to do this. You notice this rotation, my hand is doing this, right? So this is going to be the last layer of the onion. You don't want to be doing this right away. At first you're just going to play with the gourd in position and you're going to make this hand work. Get that feel. Then little by little you start moving. Then when you're going to go faster, you're going to find the groove. Hold short, close. One, one, one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And 
a good Guido shouldn't fight with you in terms of doing this scraping. What do I mean by the Guido when the Guido fights? The, the Guido has very deep grooves and you're playing with a regular stick, okay? Depends on how traditionalist and how purist you are. That stick is gonna go inside the grooves more because it's a bigger chain in that groove, right? So that creates more of a friction between the stick and the gourd. So you always kind of take a look at the gourd and you, you, so you, you, you check them out. Plan B, not to make a pun on the company that I endorse, but this is an LP Guido made out of plastic. The gourds, of course, are made in Thailand by the million and they're all made in one way. So if you like this gourd, you listen to the difference in the sound. Uh, I'm playing it with a plastic rod, transparent. It's not the one that comes with this uh, gourd normally, but uh, this was just simply from top plastic. You just got about, I mean, I guess, I guess it's seven inches or eight, eight inches. And you can, you know, play around with this a little bit. Don't make it too long because the stick is gonna stick out too much and you're gonna have too much material to, to deal with your wrist. Uh, relaxation is key point in this instrument. A relaxation of your wrist is key point in this instrument. So this is the way that this gourd will sound. Obviously, believe it or not, this gourd made of, uh, of, of a natural material is louder. And it's got a different sound. Advantages of a plastic or fiberglass guido, they're a lot more durable than this. And of course, you know, you can even step on it or in the break on the band, you can go and play catch. Uh, so this is in the chapter for the guido. I want to thank very much Dan's Papi. I want to invite everybody to come to my website, musicandela.com, and check videos of my band. Please become a friend in Facebook uh, with me, Edgardo Cambon. You can look me up there. And uh, again, I see you in the next chapter. I know we're going to be doing a chapter on maracas, claves, and the what we call percussion menor or minor or smaller percussion in Afro-Cuban music. Today, it was about this instrument. The Guido. I'm gonna play fast right now. What? I think. Ah, 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 ah. before that <laughs> <laughs> but of course but of course <laughs>